from stories of place to stories of people. Our next speaker has spent a lot of her life thinking about how to, other, how to help others achieve their potential. She's a former competitive bodybuilder, a professional runner, a running coach, and an achievement coach here at the School of Business and Information Technology. That's right, yeah. She spent a lot of time thinking about how to help others become their best selves. Here to share that with you, please welcome Kim Geek. Good morning. At 17, my father found his opportunity to leave Tuscumbia, Alabama. He convinced my grandmother to sign the permission forms allowing him to enlist in the Army before his 18th birthday. When he returned to the United States, after fighting in the Korean War, he brought back with him my Japanese mother and combat stress reaction, what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. In those days, it was considered weak to ask for help, so instead, my father self-medicated with alcohol. My mother was 27 when she arrived in America. She was welcomed with racial segregation, Elvis Presley, and hamburgers. <laughs> Other than the occasional disruptions of my father's alcoholism, I had a pretty uneventful childhood. However, the one message that was communicated to me by my parents was that asking questions would not be tolerated. The end of my high school, the senior year of high school, came with the obligatory meeting in the high school counselor's office. The purpose of this meeting was to discuss my academic future. I sat quietly across from his desk while he reviewed my file. Eventually, he looked up and said that, based on what he could see, I was not college material. His recommendation, get married, have a couple of kids. It was many years later, after earning three college degrees, and a job in post-secondary education, that I made a vow. I would never tell someone that they're not college material. Many students arrive at CNM with full plates. Their plates are filled with things like who they were in the past, or thoughts that they don't have what it takes to be successful. As an achievement coach, I hear many stories. A student I will call Carmen was referred to me by an instructor. Carmen was at risk of being dropped due to excessive absences. I asked Carmen what was the challenge that was preventing her from getting to class. Carmen began by saying that it had been her lifelong dream to come to college, but as happens to many, she chose a path of raising a family. Now the kids were grown, and she could finally fulfill her dream. But her son was incarcerated on drug charges, and her daughter-in-law was addicted to drugs. So Carmen found herself having to care for her three-year-old grandson. Oftentimes, while Carmen was at school, the daughter-in-law would call, threatening to come pick up her son. Carmen, fearing that harm would come to her son in her daughter-in-law's drug-induced state, would rush home to await her daughter-in-law's arrival. 
but often she never came. I asked Carmen to imagine that in my hand was a plate of food. On this plate were many food items like meat, potatoes, vegetables. Each of the food items represented a current challenge in Carmen's life. The meat was her incarcerated son, the potatoes, her drug addicted daughter in law, and the vegetables, her grandson. And now, a new item had been put on her food plate, college. At first, Carmen was able to take bites off of each of the items on her plate. But now, the items were starting to spill over, and Carmen found she was having to take gulps to try and keep everything on her plate. I asked Carmen what she could do to keep all the food items on her plate. Carmen sat quietly for a moment. Then she responded softly but decisively. I have to let go of my grandson. Asking questions is the focal point of what I do. During registration, I see students in the School of Business requesting approval to repeat a class for the third time. The reasons for their previous unsuccessful attempts vary from crisis to indifference. Together, we co create a success plan. One of the questions that I ask is what will you do in your third attempt to be successful? Their response, ask questions. Two main reasons given for why questions were not asked in their previous attempts were that they did not want to appear stupid or they wanted to try to do the work on their own without asking for help. Where does this kind of thinking come from? Well, when I think back to my own life experiences growing up, I think I know. I was raised in an environment where you did what you were told, and asking questions was a sign of weakness. It's often because of failure that we begin to ask questions. In your next conversation with someone, pretend you know nothing. Don't be afraid to ask questions that you don't have answers for. Thank you. <laughs>